Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an interesting equation with complex numbers. I guess we could call this homemade because I kind of thought about this idea a while ago. So we have this interesting equation, a uh, octic equation with even powers which makes it even more fun. We have z to the eighth plus z to the fourth plus one equals z to the sixth plus z squared. Now my first thought was to factor both sides, right? We can factor the right hand side, there's a common factor. We can factor the left hand side because it could be written as a difference of two squares. Think about it, how? And, but that doesn't give me any common factor, so it's not helpful. So I kind of gave up on that idea and I want to proceed with my first solution. My first solution is putting everything on the same side and then solving this by using some tricks because complex numbers have a lot of tricks and this is actually a special equation. You'll see in a little bit why this is so special. Now, we get the following equation. Notice that the signs alternate and since all the powers are even and one is z to the power zero, I'd like to make a substitution. How about calling z squared w? If I do that, I'm going to be getting a quartic equation, which is definitely much, much better than an octic, right? By the way, I included a graph here that I wanted to show you. Look at the intersection points. At how many points do these graphs intersect? None. Why not? Because there are no real solutions. That's what makes complex numbers so fun, because sometimes they can be non-real, right? Well, I mean, most of the time, maybe. Anyway, z squared equals w gives us the following. w to the fourth minus w, I don't know why I write z, w cubed plus w squared minus w plus one equals zero. And we're going to solve this equation. Now, how do you solve this equation? I'm kind of lazy, so I'm not gonna write that again. I'll probably just move this down so I don't have to copy that again, all right? Okay, good. I, I, I heard a quote that says, a good mathematician is lazy. I'm not saying I'm a good mathematician, but I'm pretty sure I'm lazy. Anyway, so let's proceed. To be able to solve this equation, I'm going to apply a little uh, math magic to this. And what is that? It is actually something that takes advantage of roots of unity, I'd like to say, but that's not the case, but we're pretty close. Okay, great, so let's do the following. I wanna multiply both sides by something and that is w plus one and when i do the expression is still zero right even though i introduce a new factor but one of the things you should keep in mind is because this is extraneous uh, we need to make sure that at the end w plus one does not equal zero in other words w should never equal negative one so make sure to note that because later on we're going to need it okay what am i getting from here by distributing right we can go ahead and distribute w to the fifth and then w to the fourth, and then minus w to the fourth, minus w cubed, and then plus w, okay, you get the idea, hopefully. If you know a little bit of algebra, if you know these identities, you'll realize, hey, this is the same thing as w to the fifth plus one. Awesome. Why? Because that's what the formula says, right? And you memorized them, didn't you? Come on, you did your work. So from here, we get w to the fifth equals negative one, the stipulation that w does not equal negative one. So how can w to the fifth be equal to negative one without the w being negative one? Wait a minute, we're in the complex world, so everything is possible, right? Multiple values. All right, let's take a look. So we found two things. w to the fifth must be negative one and w should not be negative one. Let's go ahead and turn it into the z world. And what is the z world? z squared is w, so w is z squared replace w with z squared, you're gonna get the following. z to the 10th equals negative one, but z squared does not equal negative one because w is z squared, remember that? Okay, good. What is that supposed to mean? It means that I can write negative one in polar form, thanks to Euler, because it's just an amazing way of writing these numbers. I mean, how much time it's gonna save and, and space too, right? So we can write this as e to the power i pi because again on the argon plane if you remember negative one is going to be on the negative side its distance is zero but this time the argument the angle it makes is going to be 
pi radians, or you can add multiples of 2 pi to it. So I'm going to write it as pi plus 2 pi n. Make sense? And of course, there is a slightly better way to write it by factoring out a pi, and that's going to be basically e to the power i times 2n plus 1 multiplied by pi. This is kind of nice because it emphasizes that, okay, we're only going to be looking at odd multiples of pi. You get it? Because if you hit odd multiples of pi, like pi, 3 pi, 5 pi, you're always going to be hitting the same point. Cool, cool? Now is the fun part. z to the 10th is this, so z is the 10th root of both sides. But wait a minute, this number has 10 tenth roots because it's complex, right? Things get very complex here. And um, basically, we're talking about the tenth roots of these, this number, and there are 10 of them. But one thing you should always remember, z squared cannot equal negative 1. Something that you should never, ever forget, right? Okay, so z can't be i, because i squared is negative 1. Z, can z be i? I don't know, but let's check. So here's what we're going to do next. Replace n with certain values. n can be 0, 1, any integer through 9. If you use n equals 10, it's pretty much going to be the same thing as using n equals uh, 1, I think, right? Anyways, it's just going to bring you back to the front or to the beginning. So we only need 10 values, in other words. If n is equal to 0, you're going to get this. e to the power i pi over 10. And the next ones are going to be like this. 3 i pi over 10, and then 5 i pi over 10. I'm not simplifying because I want you to see the oddness of this. You see how odd they are? 5, 7, and then 9 i pi over 10. And you have to continue until you uh, exceed 2 pi, and you're going to stop before 2 pi. 11 i pi over 10. And then what else do I have? 13 i pi over 10. I have 15 i pi over 10. I'm listing these now, but don't worry, I'm not going to list them again. 17 i pi over 10, and then 19 i pi over 10. And when you hit 21, that's going to exceed 2 pi, so you don't need to go there. Make sense? It's going to bring you back to the uh, n equals 0. So n equals 10 and n equals 0 will be the same, in other words, mod 10. Cool. Now, what am I doing with these? Among these, I need to make sure that z squared does not equal negative 1. But how is that possible? Can any of these work, like z squared is not negative 1? Hmm, let's find out. If I square these numbers, I'm going to get like 6i pi over 10. 6 pi over 10, 3 pi over 5, mm -mm. that's not going to give me a good number. But this one and that one, the ones that have 5 in their numerators, because this one is like e to the power i pi over 2, if you square it, they're going to get e to the power i pi, which is negative 1. You don't want that. And the other one is e to the power 3i pi over 2. If you square this, you're going to get e to the power 3i pi, which is negative 1 again, you don't want that either. So we have to cross these out and end up with the 8 solutions. Wait a minute, that was an octic equation anyways, so we're supposed to have 8 complex solutions. So these are all the solutions. Let's go ahead and quickly take a look at, trust me, it's not going to be quick. Okay, hang in there though, because this is going to be fun. So let's go ahead and talk about the second method. We have z to the 8th minus z to the 6th plus z to the 4th minus z squared plus 1 equals 0. Now we're going to do a little bit of uh, complex number mathematic. Ready? Look at this. Are you ready? This is the term in the middle, and it's kind of half of 8, but it's in the middle. That's what matters. Divide everything by z to the 4th. You're going to get z to the 4th minus z squared plus 1 minus 1 over z squared plus 1 over z to the 4th. And write this a little differently. z to the 4th plus 1 over z to the 4th. Bring those together. Minus z squared plus 1 over z squared. And then finally, plus 1 equals 0. Awesome. What does this give you? Substitution. Call this t. You can use w or something else as well. This gives us, by the way, this is t squared minus 2. Explore y. And then minus t plus 1 equals 0. This is t squared minus t minus 1 equals 0. Uh-oh. That smells like golden ratio, right? And from here, we get t equals 1 plus minus root 5 over 2. And then this is basically z squared plus 1 over z squared. Uh-oh, you get a quartic equation. But if you do replace z squared with something, how about you? Then you get a quadratic, and then you can back substitute. 
That's a lot of work, don't you think? Here's one thing that I'd like to tell you though. This is kind of fun and I'm gonna finish up with that. So notice that this was equal to, for example, one plus root five over two. Guess what that number is? That's actually two times the cosine of pi over five, which happens to be 36 degrees. So from here, we get an interesting equation. If you replace W with A plus B I or E to the I theta, you find out that W is actually cosine pi over five plus I sine pi over five. Because it's reciprocal, it's gonna be its conjugate when you add them together, the imaginary parts are gonna cancel out, giving us two times this. Get the idea? Hopefully you did, because this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.